was most recently hospitalized about a week and a half ago with GI bleeding on Coumadin. She was not a good candidate for surgical appendage closure given her age, you know. And so this was felt to be the most minimally invasive uh, technique to mitigate her stroke risk. So we have an 87-year-old female who's been hospitalized twice in the last few months for severe GI bleeding. She has persistent atrial fibrillation, is at an elevated risk for having a stroke. Unfortunately, with these two GI bleeds, she's unable to take blood thinners that are traditionally given to protect from stroke. The option at this time is to tie off the left atrial appendage to mitigate that stroke risk. She's not felt to be an appropriate surgical candidate given her age and comorbidities, so we're opting for a minimally invasive approach using the Lariat left atrial appendage closure device. Standard method of just getting venous access in the femoral vein. We'll put an 8 French and a 5 French sheath in the femoral vein. So now under fluoroscopy, we'll identify our target. Come in your way, John. So we'll check the trajectory of the needle. That looks a little bit lateral. That might be just a hair medial. Right about there. So we'll draw a line on the skin. or on the dressing, I should say, and this will not go on the skin. And now even one of the needles underneath her rib cage will be able to get a sense for if we're pointing in the right direction. And you do get a sense of a little bit of a lucency, likely representing pericardial fat, and that's really our target in that epicardial space. Okay. So I think we're pretty close there. I'm going to shoot a little bit of contrast. Okay, so this is going to actually be a lot better. Make sure I'm not getting too lateral. Yeah, so go ahead and drive a little bit this way. Come a little more. Great. Perfect. Yeah, that looks really good. There we go, we popped. Okay, so now you can see we're hugging the lateral silhouette. You know, at this point you have to make a decision. Are you in the RV or the epicardial space? And the RV will not hug the lateral silhouette there in the LAO or the lateral view. And so you're confident now we're in a good spot. Go ahead and breathe. Wire. We're watching the AP pushing all these dilators about where they w we want them to go. To the appendage. The sheath we put in is, I think, 13 and a half French. Yes. And so our last dilation will be with a 14 French. Great. Now the 14, this one sometimes is a bit tight. If it feels real tight, we have a 16 we can use because we really want the 13 and a half to be pretty mobile in there. So that's going to be fine. We can go in with the soft tip now. So it has a little bit of a bend to it. And this allows us to either clock posterior or counterclock anterior the other way around. If you're inside, we can counter posterior or clock anterior to get around the appendage. Because this is what we'll use to direct the lariat. So we've used the 16 just to dilate at the skin so it goes more freely, like that. And you can identify the tip, still looks great. And now we're gonna leave this right about here. I'm gonna park the dilator, and we can just leave it like this. Okay, now we have to switch gears. We've got our pericardial space. This is not a hemostatic valve, so if there's any pericardial bleeding at this time, we'll identify it as it drips out around, around the wire. This wire will go into the superior vena cava. 
And then Chris has got an 8.5 French SL1 long sheath. Which we'll use to go transepta with. It's also what the endocardial magnet wire will be delivered through. We'll next have the BRK XS needle. It has a little stylet in it. This needle is what will be used to cross the interatrial septum. Stylet comes out. Thank you. Saline flush. Now this is a little more of a poster view. The, the view that has the aortic valve in it is ideal for us because you know the appendage is an anterior structure. Um, the SVC, what you see there, is more of a posterior structure. So this view may mislead us uh, towards the more posterior uh, fossa, but at least we'll know we're safely in the fossa. So good. So there he sees us there. Is that right. That's that's There's not a, what you can see. There's you, you don't have a lot of room, right? Yeah. So you're right against the posterior wall there. So you, let's see what we can do to tune that up before we try to cross. The the danger here is that you cross into the left atrium and then out the posterior wall. When you wait on it, what does that do? Does it help get the tissue on top of the needle? Yeah, I'm just relying on the beating of the heart to, uh, oh, to help push it through. There we go. Across there. Okay. So there's left atrial pressure. You've already given your 5,000 of heparin. So, John, what you want to do now is see if you can give me that left superior pulmonary vein view. So the wire has gone into the left atrium easily, which is nice. So now using the wire as a rail, we'll push the sheath across. Okay, so good, that's a good spot for the sheath. Okay, so now we can pull all of this out. Yeah. So this is a wire that's gonna go into the appendage. I don't know if there's a better way to show this to you. This magnet at the tip will be used to connect with an epicardial magnet wire, and that'll create a rail for the lariat to go over. This balloon will be set right at the mouth of the appendage. That way we'll know, as long as we're proximal to that balloon, we're tying off the appendage. Okay, good. You can uh, stop flushing, go to pressure. And you're out ahead of me a little bit, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so good. So why don't you leave it right there. Right there. And so you're starting to see wire artifact, but it's not in the appendage there. So I got this. So let's just counter, come back. Yeah, we may end up needing a little more bend to get down. Yeah. I hear you. And, and so if we should just counter back into it from here. So at this stage we just need to identify the left atrial appendage and get the endowire to the very tip to use as our rail. So we're just going to take a couple of seconds and get a good picture of it. So there you go, we are in. Yep. Now the wires have kissed. And it's important at this point to not have any tension on the epicardial wire. And so this loop is going to encircle the appendage. So we need to go straight through there and we're going to ride these wires to get around the appendage. So go ahead and feed that where it needs to be fed. So we're coming down on the lariat here. You want to take this and move yep. that? Yeah. Okay. Just support that for me. Okay. okay. We're coming in here. Okay. 
Let's just do what this. Okay. It's coming up. Now as we exit the sheath here, in the lateral view, we really need that marker to be on the left side. So actually we're okay. We're okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up. Good. And so you clearly see the markers on the left hand side in the lateral view. That's very important. Absolutely. So we're gonna just gently advance over the appendage, paying attention to the wires, make sure we're not it's all the way open. Okay. Good. So there's no flow into the appendage. Okay. Okay. So now what we're going to try to do is without launching. Just bench this epi wire. I'm going to do this one. Okay. Pull mine back. Yeah, just there. Okay. Okay. So good. And John, you're still happy. Okay. So now we're going to deploy the suture. Pulling the red tab straight back, staying coaxial. We're going to maintain a prolapse. Okay, we've got three inches of green. You're still looking good, John? Okay. Good. And now, we'll open the lariat, maintaining our prolapse. Yep. Okay, so we're maintaining prolapse right there. Okay. Go ahead and hook up the tenger. Okay. So the tenger allows us to give the exact correct amount of tension on the suture. It'll it'll will give exactly ten pounds for five seconds. Watching the prolapse in the RAO. Okay, that's one thousand, two thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five one thousand. And down, and we wait five minutes and tighten the suture one more time. Yeah, T, there's still no flow, no appendage. Beautiful. So it's a nice, smooth, sealed off area where the appendage used to be. We'll go ahead and pull everything out and put a drain in, and we'll be all done. The first step of the procedure here is to take this very small micropuncture needle below the rib cage into this. Uh, pericardial space anterior to the right ventricle which you see here beating you have pacing leads in the right ventricle and right atrium and so we'll bring this needle into this potential space to gain access to the pericardium what you see here is we've gained epicardial access with this sheath this is an epicardial sheath with a wire just in the pericardium the other sheath has gone transeptal across the intraatrial septum into the left atrium a balloon is here at the os of the left atrial appendage, we're shooting contrast, filling up the left atrial appendage that we're going to be tying off, and you have this endocardial magnet wire that we will use to match up the epicardial magnet wire to run the lariat over. Now you see we've created the rail with our epicardial sheath with epicardial magnet wire, endocardial sheath going transeptal into the left atrium this wire tip at the tip of the left atrial appendage. This magnet connection will enable the lariat suture to be pushed over and tie off the appendage. The lariat has been advanced proximal to the magnet wire to the base of the left atrial appendage. It is closed uh, the os of the left atrial appendage. We have not yet deployed our suture. We're taking a picture now, seeing no flow into the appendage. Now we know we can safely deploy the suture after we remove the endocardial wire from the body. This is our final shot. The suture has been deployed at the os of the left atrial appendage. There is no flow into the appendage that will used to be present right here. The lariat uh, device is uh, being removed from the body here. After this, we'll put a drain in to monitor the patient overnight, and uh, this is a successful closure of the left atrial appendage.